Uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the session. My name is Ruhi. I'm, I'm working as a digital assessment manager with Pearson Education India. And today's topic is very relevant to the, the current pandemic situation that we all are facing in our own specific way. Whether a student who is preparing for delayed exam or a working parent who is juggling between the household work and office work, or a teacher who is trying all his level best in enabling their students to prepare for upcoming exams. The moment of stress are increasing day by day for us. And hence the discussion is ha happening today. We have Richard Ranjan with us to talk about this topic and share a few helpful and easy techniques to overcome the stress. She is an IIT graduate and has a vast corporate experience of 11 years. After stepping down as a VP of, uh, at Morgan Stanley, she invested herself fully in pioneering the knowledge around applied sciences and gaining deeper insight into traditional wisdom. And how this knowledge can be applied to correct different aspects of lifestyles, which are against the nature. So this is all what Richa is going to share with us. Over to you, Richa. Thank you, Rui, for the introduction. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining this discussion. I hope it's going to be a fruitful one for you. Well, as you see, I'm uh, an engineer by education. So the obvious question, how my change uh, in the area of interest? Well, after spending almost 11 years in the corporate and after going through my own health issues, some of which were recurrent, some were chronic, and after... Um, seeing how health and happiness is so elusive in our society at large, even though we have all the amenities and facilities at our disposal today. I wanted to understand what's going wrong. So I started this journey. Um, realizing how, uh, how our ancestors always kept health and happiness at the center of whatever they did, it kind of intrigued me even further and I uh, started my journey to know more and more about the traditional wisdom. Uh, coming from science, science background, I use science as a tool to also understand what those traditional wisdoms uh, were meant for and what was the rationale behind, those, uh, behind what our ancestors did. Uh, most of what we'll talk about today comes from uh, my understanding of the traditional wisdom most of which is also being corroborated by science today. Uh, many of uh, the things that we'll be discussing later in the session, I've applied in my life and I've seen how, uh, how much of a benefit we gain out of it. However, as I'm not a doctor, none of this should be treated as a medical advice. If you think you, there is an underlying medical condition, then I'll suggest please consult your doctor for the same. Um, given that there are many, many, many things that we can do, many, many, many things that we are doing wrong and so we can rectify. Uh, I know that uh, time is limited and we probably have a month or two at our disposal. So keeping all that in mind, I've tried to sieve out things uh, which I thought will be most beneficial for you as students, as parents, as guardians, as teachers in the time frame that we are looking at and which would be more, most practical and most effective. So therefore, we'll try to keep it very short and as effective as possible. Um, uh, uh, and the next slide, slide please. Yep, thank you. Um, so, well, we'll be stressing on uh, three points. Uh, very briefly, we'll discuss what is stress and anxiety. We'll see how the hormonal uh, factors uh, uh, cause it and also help uh, in, in stress. And uh, uh, the, the most important one being how do we uh, control the situation and uh, make it manageable. Yeah, the next one, please. Okay, so what is stress and anxiety? Now, as I said, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go through it at a very, very high level. We'll not be going into too many details over here. Uh, the most important thing to understand here is we say there is a lot of stress. Now we need to understand what is the stress and where is the stress. 
now there will be many many situations in life right it could be um, it could be uh, say an accident or an object falling it could be an exam or whatever so we need to understand that the situation in itself is not stress the how our body and mind reacts to the situation is really what is stress so the stimulus is not stress is the reaction of our body and mind that is stress so we need to understand so it's really up to us and there's so much that we can do on how we react to a given stimulus uh, at a very high level the difference between stress and anxiety being uh, chronicity uh, the more chronic the stress becomes it's generally called anxiety sometimes even after the stimulus is gone the stress if it persists uh, that is also called anxiety um uh, but the the most uh, important uh, thing to note here is the fact that we have control over how our body and mind will react and uh, stress should always not be taken in a very negative way because we we do need stress we need to understand say if there is an object falling our body has to get in a, in a fight or flight or freeze mode to to handle that situation and and that is why we have stress hormones so, so those are beneficial hormones the issue is if it persists for long and it starts affecting our day to day activities that is where the issue arises so we'll move to the next slide please we'll we'll briefly look at hormones the first being cortisol as you see the two glands highlighted in the picture these are called the adrenal glands uh, these are situated right uh, above our kidneys uh, they do many things one of the most important being uh, production of cortisol it is this it is called the stress hormone and now as i said stre uh, the uh, stress is something that's needed because we there are situations where we have to get in a, in a stress mode and therefore we have to uh, therefore we'll be able to react the way we are supposed to so uh, naturally stress uh, the 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 stress hormone which is cortisol is secreted in our body in adequate amounts uh, in the morning and throughout the day also so we need to be awake throughout the day and that's why we have cortisol hormone the issue is if there are spikes in this hormones and there are repeated spikes or persistent spikes that's where the issue starts building up but as i said it's a beneficial hormone we need the hormone uh, to do our day to day uh, activity yeah the next one please okay uh, the next hormone that we'll be talking about uh, is the melatonin uh, hormone um, so the pineal gland uh, as you can see the red dot on my forehead between uh, the eyebrows so behind that somewhere in between uh, in the brain is the pineal gland it's a small gland p shaped gland but it's a very very important gland it regulates the melatonin hormone which is also called the anti stress hormone or the sleep hormone so it regul it it along with cortisol helps with our sleep wake cycle regulates our circadian rhythm and it as as, as the name suggests is the anti stress hormone so very very uh important hormone that um, the 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 body needs now um uh, maybe the mothers who would have joined you know uh, the 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 sticker bindi that we put where the pineal gland is right behind that red dot uh, may that may be hampering a pineal gland so something that maybe the mothers who have joined may want to look at uh, uh so traditionally we've been putting uh, haldi kumkum there some people also put uh, chandan etc so so if you see traditional wisdom has a lot of things that that were put in that region to maybe calm and pacify and make sure that the gland is working fine so a, a point to note for the mothers who, who may have joined yeah next slide please right so if you see um there is there is another hormone that uh, that's called serotonin and it's called the happy hormone the name is self explanatory and 90% of this hormone is produced in our gut so you see how important role gut plays in keeping us happy and healthy and stress free and how uh, how uh, how much we've ignored what we're eating etc it's 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 is most of our stress etc is coming from our our gut 90% of serotonin happy hormone is produced in our gut we need to keep this in mind uh, always it's it's something that's overlooked quite often 
but it's very 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 essential uh, we need to we we need to keep uh, serotonin happy uh, if if the happy hormone becomes unhappy it will be little bit difficult for us to be happy um uh, so uh, so there's a lot of interaction between the gut and the brain you see 90% is being produced in the gut now um uh, uh, now basically a lot of stress anxiety depression etc uh, actually starts building up from uh, from the issues that we face in you know with the serotonin hormone you would you would have heard about gut feeling probably this is where it comes from gut is a stomach our uh, uh, our uh, the the small intestine you know the, the basically where we are, we are putting the food you know uh, all that yes so uh, so we need to understand the importance of it uh, if, if you if you highlight the portion that's gut it, it's displayed there that uh, um, the the small intestine large intestine uh, yes that's that's where uh, you know that's it's being produced and it's directly impacting our brain yes um, so if you can move to the next one please okay now uh, the most important part what should be done so we briefly saw what stress is or what anxiety is and then we uh, we we talked about three hormones the stress hormone uh, cortisol uh, the happy hormone serotonin and the anti stress hormone uh, melatonin uh, we saw uh, w uh, the three glands the adrenal glands the pineal gland and uh, gut all of the three playing a major major role uh, in uh, 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 you know how we handle stress etc i think the most important part and what we all would be most interested in will be how we uh, what should be done you know uh, understanding uh, with this premise what needs to be done so let's let's look at it okay so we would have heard this ad nauseum no junk food but why is the question right so we just saw 90% of our happy hormone is being produced in the gut what does junk mean junk means garbage trash if we put in garbage trash in our gut in our uh, food pipe what happens to the happy hormone no rocket science it becomes garbage hormone it becomes trash hormones we cannot be happy with garbage and trash hormones if if we are replacing our happy hormones with garbage and trash hormones we'll be uh, we'll be always in a state like a garbage or a trash right so junk which means garbage and trash should be going in into the dustbin the garbage bin the trash bin instead of that we are putting it in our in our food pipe we are putting it in our in our stomach in our gut right so we know we are we are doing a, a great disservice to how the hormones uh, uh, are uh, uh, working in our body now uh, one point that i wanted to highlight here is whenever we talk about uh, food we uh, we think about calories now uh, assuming most of you you know would already know about calories i'll still anyway uh, talk briefly about it calorie is a measure of um, energy now 1 kilo calorie is the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of 1 kg of water by 1 degree centigrade right so calorie is a measure of energy it's not a measure of the favorability of the food or the nutrition nutritional value of the food right so we need to keep in mind that even rat poison even rat poison will have a calorie we cannot think of um, that you know if if it's a low calorie rat rat poison it's not a poison even a low calorie rat poison is a poison so anything that's junk anything that's fake food anything that is chemicals not made naturally processed extensively chemically physically all that is not natural Hum humans are natural we are we are made of nature we we are part of nature we are not made for chemicals produced in the labs right so look at the ingredients it's no rocket science um, uh, i i won't suggest to to change your diet uh, in the short span of time that we're looking at but try to avoid all all the junk food as much as possible i prefer to call it toxic food because it's not the calorie which is causing the issue more than that it's the toxicity if we are if we are putting in toxic food in our food pipe then obviously it will be toxic hormones that will be produced not be happy hormones so that is where we need to understand um, the importance of what we eat now the obvious question is obviously uh, 
as students you would be feeling hungry more often you know uh, while spending your time studying etc so the obvious question is what do i eat what do i munch on many 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 things which you'll find at your home you can uh, roast chura which is also called flattened rice puffed rice some rice crackers maybe you know if if you have help at home maybe somebody can flip you a chila or a dosa or something or upma or maybe take out 15 20 minutes and go and uh, cook for yourself It doesn't take too much time so uh, uh, so we need to really work on this in the even in the short span of time that we're looking at try to avoid junk toxic food as much as possible okay the next one please okay you would have heard so many times about it right amount of sleep and sleep on time uh, uh so why do we need uh, sleep now as you see uh, we uh, we need our body to uh, to sleep so that it's able to detox well why do we need to detox because when they, when there's too much of toxic load uh, on our body you know these hormones they go in a state of disarray so it's very easy for all the imbalances to kick in and then to ha- to be in a state of it could be anything it could be stress it could be depression it could be anxiety it could be it could be a host of things right majority of our uh, new age issues health issues that we are seeing you know are because of these reasons so we need we need to give proper uh, rest to our body so that it's able to you know it, it needs time to to repair and rejuvenate so sleep is that time we need to start we need to try to go to sleep at the right time if you are sleeping very late maybe maybe the body's uh, time for uh, for rejuvenation is done the body was expecting to do rejuvenation but you you've kept it awake so it's not able to do and so the rejuvenation may not happen if you sleep very late in the night i understand that you know uh, the the modern day lifestyle is such that we are in a habit of sleeping late but i'll suggest you you do make an attempt in the ne- in the next one or two months you you do please do make an attempt to start to sleep on time why uh, how do you do do it practically well um, the 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 glands need to get signals uh, so that you know it knows that it's now time to uh, sleep so when uh, in earlier times when we were we were cl- much closer to the nature our body based on the uh, sun cycle it knew that it's morning and it's night now because we have so much of light exposure even during the night that our body doesn't get the right signals that it's time to to sleep it's end of the day and it's time to sleep so we need to cut our exposure to light as much as possible during the the night so maybe one hour before you plan to sleep try to cut down your exposure to screens to tv uh, try to be in a dark room so that your uh, your glands get signal the melatonin needs to be produced you know to to send signal that it's night time and and we need to sleep so uh, so try to avoid light try to be in a dark room um try to uh, one one more thing that can be done is try to avoid naps during the day time try to awake keep yourself awake during the day time that will help you sleep better during the night uh, yes the next one please okay spending time in the morning sun well um, so many people would have said uh, morning sunlight is so 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 essential now there's so much of research and science corroborating this ancient wisdom traditional wisdom uh it it not only helps you with your stress and anxiety and your hormonal balance it will help you with your immunity with your vitamin d with with a host of things all those are added bon- uh, bonus but definitely with your stress and anxiety if, even if you're able to spend 10 20 minutes in the morning sun your entire day will get so much more fruitful i understand we are not in the habit of waking up that early but i'll suggest do give it a try even for a day or two whatever it takes whether an alarm or make sure your parents or guardians you know they they wake you up somehow uh, they figure out a way and wake you up do it for one or two days you'll you'll see the difference and you'll want to do it uh, more often right it will just become a part of your life just spend that 10 minutes one day and you'll see how much more productive and effective the entire day becomes the other benefit that you get by doing this is that your body gets a signal that it's morning when you're spending time in the morning sun 
so it will automatically get a better signal when the sun has set and it's time to wrap up and call it a day so your sleep gets much better not only just that you'll you'll start sleeping on time your sleep quality will be much much more improved so it's a it's a cause and effect thing it it'll take some effort i understand but i'll i'll suggest nevertheless please do make an attempt to make this one change uh, and you'll see how this is going to affect your sleep also uh, and obviously the productivity is going to increase um well this is a, a very interesting point uh, and um, we may have heard about uh, pranayam etc so often essentially is deep breathing right uh, well there you will find a lot of apps and uh, texts and videos on the net no time to go through it don't worry just do this uh, four counts inhale four counts exhale if you can hold your breath for four counts do it if not don't worry just inhale and exhale in fact do it, we can do it as we speak uh i'll i'll probably just count four we inhale and then we exhale four it shouldn't be a very laborious uh, breathe in and breathe out very natural so let's try let's start and see how it is breathe in 1 2 3 4 breathe out 1 2 3 4 i hope you can you can see the difference just do it for 2 minutes whenever you have time you can do it if you are spending time in the mornings and that's when you can do it otherwise 2 minutes any time along with this if you are able to uh touch your uh, index finger with the, the tip of your index finger with the tip of your thumb this mudra which is also called gyan mudra this this mudra helps your pineal gland so it will it will add to the benefit it will add to the hormonal uh, balance uh, we can try it now we can we can we can form this gyan mudra put it on your uh, knees or wherever yeah and then i'll count four breathe in four breathe out breathe in 1 2 3 4 breathe out 1 2 3 4 i hope you can see the difference and feel it very simple do it for 2 minutes this is something that uh, even the parents can do you know i can understand how stressful it's, it will be for the parents so so please try try this uh, the parents as well as the students for teachers maybe you know you can make it a practice when you have your regular classes you can you can maybe start it with start a breathe in and a breathe out and then do uh the rest of the class it will help the students to to calm down to gather themselves and and you know uh then get in a in a mode where where their grasping power also gets better uh so it it helps in producing endorphins uh, which is uh, a chemical uh, it's needed for uh, the feel good factor the deep breathing uh increases the oxygen and it sends a signal to the brain to calm down so in a in a state of stress this is something that you can fall back on so if you are really feeling very stressed and and in a state of anxiety this is a very quick uh, fix that you can try out okay drinking water it's it's such a easy thing to re- sometimes when we are stressed and uh, in a in a very uh, uh, state of anxiety i think what we probably need is just a glass of water it may sound too simple but that's what it is in fact water has a lot of calming uh, properties and that's how it helps uh the uh, the most important thing that i would like to highlight here is that we try to start a day with a glass of water warm water because now warm water is being recommended because of corona so uh, even if you're in a habit of having your tea or coffee uh, as a first thing in the morning i'll not say that you change that habit this is too short a time frame to do that so you may still uh, have your tea or coffee but instead of starting your day with it start your day with one if not two then at least one uh, glass of warm water and then later you have whatever you have uh, usually uh, water helps to start the detox of the body less the toxins less will be the stress because toxins interfere with our hormones and you know they uh, so basically they uh, 
they make the horm- hormones go out of balance the more water you're giving yourself the more detox you'll be able to do especially the the water that you're having in morning so please 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 try to start your day with that uh, one or two glasses of water during the day also keep having water i understand it becomes an issue to go and get your water especially when you are studying and trying to focus on something what you can do is instead keep a uh, keep a thermos uh, filled with water i'm suggesting thermos because as i said warm water is being recommended um uh, uh, because of the corona pandemic so uh, keep it filled keep it at your table keep having water if you are finding an issue to refill it maybe take someone's help who can refill it for you um uh, Uh, somebody from your family or your sibling or someone who can refill it whenever you need but keep 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 uh, drinking water and especially the water in the morning it will help you immensely in fact if you have water right now besides you you can try you can just you can just concentrate on your uh, on your uh, level of stress and calmness and you can see how much of an impact that makes okay so this is one of my personal favorites uh, detox food soap so what you need is um, a bucket of hot water and maybe two spoons of rock salt in it to begin with uh, you can later on increase the quantity of rock salt once you get more used to this detox and you just need to put your feet in it for uh, uh for 10 minutes if you can do for 15 minutes do it for 15 if not just for 10 uh preparing it please take help Uh, of someone in your family uh, they can prepare uh, the water and put the salt and get it for you you can probably in those 10 or 15 minutes you can do some theory practice that was pending for some time or you can do it um, maybe when you want to take a uh, take a break uh, so just one bucket of water with rock salt rock salt is sendha namak uh, pink salt himalayan salt you know it comes in various names very simple you you should be able to get it in any grocery store uh nearby but it's it's uh, it works wonders uh, just put just soak your feet in it for 10 to 15 minutes and you'll see the the difference it it makes it should be very very helpful for the parents as well uh because i can understand the situation that you would be in so so try it it's it's very very important that you also uh are able to handle the situation better so try it out and and also help your children and ward uh, with this uh, help them with the setup so that they can they can uh, do it uh, but uh, very effective as i said one of my favorites okay um think positive you would have heard this so so many times now what is think positive now now you would know e is equal to mc square right the mass is not there in isolation there is energy effect there is energy associated with it there is energy around us so we have to make sure that uh, we um, we are we uh, we are sending out positive energy because you know there is a third law what you send out comes back so if we, we send out more positive we get more positive we send out negative we get negative <laughs> excuse me if for whatever reason you think there is a lot of negative energy which is affecting affecting you it could be because of all the corona case case counting that you are listening to or coming in your news feed stop it switch off your tv uh, disable the news feed whatever it takes make sure that you are thinking positive make sure that what you are listening to is positive make sure that the environment is positive and i think the parents and guardians have a very very big role to play here they have to make that environment positive so that we are all better equipped to handle it e is equal to mc square we have to keep that in mind the mass is not in isolation we always think when we think of situations we think of humans as as bodies there is energy around it there is energy associated with it so we have to think in that terms we cannot be uh so we cannot be basically uh you know always thinking negative and then expect positive to happen we have to we have to start thinking positive so that it comes back to us uh, that way so e is equal to mc square we we need to keep that in mind always okay um so practice uh, test and discussion now the the good thing with this situation uh, as i said in the very beginning the the situation in itself is not stress it's how our body and mind 
reacts to the situation uh, is stress basically so the the good thing here is that we know what that situation is we know that there will be a day when we are going and we have to write this exam right because most of the situations that life throws at us uh, are not planned situations or anticipated situations more often than not the situations uh, will just come up as you know many of you would know so the best part here is it's a known situation we know that yes that's going to be the day that's going to be when we are going to write that exam so we have to prepare ourselves for that situation because stress is nothing stress is whatever is the way our body and mind is going to react so we have to train our body and mind so we have to practice in hindi there is a saying that says karat karat abhyas te jarmati ho so jaan rasri avat jate silpar parat nisan essentially translates into the english saying uh, practice makes a human perfect right so we need to make sure that we have enough 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 practice right now in spite of all the practice if we haven't trained ourselves for that situation we may uh, our body may not be able to react appropriately on the d day right so that is why we need to uh, we need to write these simulated tests not just tests but simulated tests now it's not going to be an open book exam it's not going to be an exam where you will have parents uh, to to seek help from or teachers to seek help from or peers to seek help from so you have to simulate that environment you have to write the, those tests and then of course you have written those tests so how do the tests help you they do help you in uh, in uh, training your mind and body to be better equipped to handle the day day but it it will also help you in understanding where you're going wrong and you know where you can improve so that's where the discussion comes into picture we need to discuss with our peers our teachers or even ourselves whoever is available right so the discussion will help you to hone your skills it will help you identify where you're going wrong and accordingly you can identify what, what to practice on what is what is it that you need to focus more on uh, so i'll repeat practice simulated tests and discussion so we have to do do these three things so that we are uh, much better equipped to handle the d day uh, we are our bodies and minds are trained are anesthetized so that we uh, th that day is not such a big shock for us that we we go into a into a state of uh, complete blanking or stress or anxiety it's a known stress that's the Uh, that's the best part of the stress it's a known stress unlike most of the stress in in life which are unknown which just the life just throws at you so let's let's make the most of it practice test and uh, discussion and anesthetize our mind yes so the crux of it um, let's try to make those uh, small changes whichever you think were most helpful which you think are practical can be done do it as is as i said in the very beginning i've tried to just see out things which i thought could help students uh, in the situation that they are right now in which is really you know the exams are just round the corner so uh, keeping all of that in mind and the teachers and the the parents uh, the the parents should also benefit a lot from these uh these you know the the, sh the small tricks maybe deep breathing foot soak waking up in the morning i understand mothers the moment they wake up they have zillions of things in their mind that they need to do but please do try to spend those 10 minutes that will be much better for you and for the family you know everybody will be more more happy we need to keep the the family the environment in the family happy we need to keep uh we need to have positive thoughts right if the, if if we are not in a very positive mood ourselves you know that kind of reflects on others as well in the family you'll see if just one person is not in a very happy state it starts affecting everyone else so i think everyone in the family has to do their bit to uh, to make sure that the energies are positive teachers especially i think this is the time when you know the students are um are done mostly done with the uh, with their course uh, i think it's the time that they need to make sure the students are writing as much as possible writing tests simulated tests so if 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 the if for example let's say physics chemistry maths is one paper they should be writing it that way instead of split papers because now we are very very close to the d day so please uh, i think i think uh, now is the time when we help our students 
take as many tests and then we help them identify where they are going wrong so that the, the, the students can then just focus on those areas. Um, so that way the burden also reduces for the teachers, you know, they have lesser to do uh, instead of, you know, maybe covering topics uh, from scratch now because maybe now that's, that's not the time. I think those, uh, if, if the teachers themselves, you know, because of all the lockdown situation, they are also in a stress because there's household chores and other things to take care of. Please do try to incorporate the, the tips that I've shared because those would be equally beneficial for you as well. Okay, uh, I hope it was uh, useful and yes, let's keep always learning. That's how I've, uh, I've been able to figure out whatever I've shared with you today. Uh, as I said, there are many, many more things. I've just tried to pick and choose what I thought would be relevant without wasting a lot of your time. Uh, with that, I hand it back over to you, Rohi. Thank you. Thank you, Richa. That was a very wonderful uh, session by you. And I got many tips for myself also. I'm going to try them. And I'm, I'm hopeful that other people also got something really useful for them. Okay, uh, so we have opened the session for Q&A. You can post any question that you have in your mind in the question and answer, answer section that you can see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please post there in the question answer panel. Uh, keeping check on the chat for all the questions would be a little difficult. So I would request if you can write on the question and answer. Okay. Okay, so uh, Richa, we have few questions for you here. Uh, could you at last please for about two minutes, can you discuss about how to stop thinking about some particular thing? So, right. so yeah. So, yeah, so that's a very good question. So that is exactly what stress is. If there's just one thought coming repeatedly in our mind, that is stress, right? So we need to... Uh, identify we need to first make sure that we have identified this is stress that's one of the first primary indicators that it's a it's a stress we have our body is not able to deal with that situation right now uh, the the few things that i've mentioned i think if you try to incorporate incorporate those things that should help you just just try to do a deep breathing when you get that thought do a deep breathing uh, when you do the deep breathing the most important part is focus concentrate on the breathing don't concentrate on anything else but the breathing. That's the most, most important part, right? Just concentrate on taking in the negativity, uh, sorry, the positivity and taking out all the negativity. So that's how you should be doing the breathing. Uh, do, do, when you do your, uh, do your feet soak, just, just think that all the negativity is going out within it. It's a detox foot soak. So detox is you, you're removing the toxins from your body. Toxins are what is adding to our stress. Try to remove toxins as much as possible. Now, I've only mentioned junk food. There's so many else, you know, so many other things which are which are toxic, like the chemicals that we're putting on our screen, on our um, on our body, on our skin, on our hair, and other things. The toiletries that we use, the uh, the, the the home cleaning agents that we use, those are all toxic. Depending on how much you can handle, how, how many changes you can make, try to remove toxins from your day-to-day -day life. But uh, the, the, the few tips that I've shared should be able to help you deal uh, with the situation uh, in, in, in some manner. It, it should help you over a period of time, not just in a one day, but over a period of time, it should enable you better to handle that situation. So always remember stress is how our body is reacting to it. If, if that thought is coming and again, 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 our body is not able to react to that situation well. So we have to train our body. So the next question is, does all oily foods are junk food? Um, so oily, uh, it's better to avoid oily, too much of oily food because that is going to put a lot of stress uh, on our bodies. Once in a while is okay, but maybe, you know, because we are very, very close to the exam, why even put that uh, extra stress on our bodies? So eat as much, you know, as, as close to nature, whatever whatever is more close to nature is more healthy for us. So if you can try doing that, that's best. A little oily is okay, but I think it will more depend on the type of oil that we're using. Shouldn't be refined, etc. Because refined is processed uh, uh, extensively physically and chemically processed, right? So try to use natural oil or ghee, natural ghee that's available. 
um, but as far as possible, avoid it uh, since we are very close to the exams right now. Richard, the next question is for how much time we should sleep? Um, see, there's no fixed uh, number here. Um, different school of thoughts have different opinions on it. Uh, Ayurveda has its own perspective based on the body type. It suggests how, how many hours you should sleep. Uh, there is a uh, national foundation, sleep foundation also, which has its own recommendations. But ideally between I think seven to nine is what should be good enough. Uh, more than the, the, the amount of sleep, it's, it's the quality of sleep. Uh, but still try to sleep close to at least seven hours, you know, even if I understand you need more time for everything else. But at least seven hours, try to sleep. Okay. Uh, very, uh, a very good question about the uh, relevant time that we are going through. How to deal with exam stress? Can you please tell me? Right. So, if you uh, if you see exam uh, is a is a situation. It's a known situation, right? So exam is not a stress by in itself. It's a situation. If we think that we, our body and mind are not yet equipped to handle that situation, we need to train our body and mind. So, training is the most important thing here. We have trained because it's a known situation. It will come. It's like you know the. Uh, it's it's a hill we have to cross it it's not like there is a side way you know we can just uh, bypass the hill and go so we have to train ourselves no it is something that we have to cross it, it we have to do it so let's practice let's practice let's sim write simulated tests let, let's discuss let's do it in uh, let's do it repeatedly and uh, alongside of that the other tips that i've shared should help should help you uh, should should help you uh, should empower you further to to deal that situation on the detail. Uh, okay, the next question is: I'm no longer feel like to study more for the exam. What should I do? Right. So uh, I is it this is this this uh, since we are so 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 close to the exams. I think this time more than study, it should be your. Uh, test and discussion and practicing uh, the part where you're falling short. I think this is that time. This is not the time to, you know, revise everything from scratch. So that our, our focus should be uh, write test, discuss, practice part which you think you're falling short on. Okay. <clears throat> One question is again, seems to be from a student. Uh, if uh, in an examination hall, I am blank out, then what should I do as an immediate fix? Okay, perfect. This is a very so blanking out is a is an acute condition, right? Where where the stress, where the, the situation uh, has made a body react, in, body and mind react in such a way that we've blanked out, we've zoned out. Um, my suggestion would be that if if at all this happens, try to do the deep breathing. Do the, do, do, do the deep breathing for one minute, two minutes. Try to gather yourself. You need to, you need to uh, prepare yourself for the situation. You need to get your mind back, uh, right? It, it's kind of zoned out. So you have to get it back. Like I said, it, I think it should be done as, as a practice. Uh, even even my, my suggestion and uh, my suggestion to the teachers as well. Try to make it a habit that you know we do that before we, we do the classes. However, on the exam day, if at all that happens, as I said, it's an acute condition, we need to get it back. We need to get our mind back. So try to do a deep breathing. When you, when you do the deep breathing, focus on your breathing. That's, that's the most important part. Focus on your breathing. Try to gather your thoughts and get it back. Okay. The next question is from a teacher who says that uh, I am a teacher and in enabling my students to prepare well for exam. Especially during lockdown, I feel 24 hours are not enough. Can you share some way to organize my chart so that I can handle the associated stress? Yes, that's a very good question. Many people are paying, many professionals are facing this issue, you know, because there's just so much, so much more that we are supposed to do. Now, now see again, uh, I think especially for teachers, try to focus on the, the, the test and the discussion for now. We are not supposed to be teaching. This is not the time to really teach and overwhelm the students. So let's let's cut down on that. Let's focus on this. So you know exactly what you need to focus on. Make sure this is this is what this is just what I need to focus on. Nothing else. Uh, 
uh, and uh, for uh, to be able to better prepare yourself to to take especially this stressful condition that we are all in right now i'll suggest please please um, uh, try to incorporate those things as a teacher because you don't have to do your studies and other things you will probably have more time so there is there are many many more things that you can do uh, i have been sharing a lot of those things you can probably take out time and go through those and and see how that will help uh, because you would probably have more time uh, for those things but anyway irrespective i think what i have shared should definitely help uh, you come overcome these things okay so the next question richa for you is how much water should we drink in a day again there is no uh, there is no fixed uh, rule here the the issue here is that see we have come very very far from nature right now we uh, we we are very, we we keep struggling to find out you know how much to drink how much to sleep our body is telling us all of that we just not listening to it now i don't expect the students to start listening to their body in one or two months but at least have 2 to 3 liters to begin with if you if you are not used to drinking too much of water but at least start with that if you can increase whenever you feel thirsty drink it if you if you don't realize you're feeling thirsty then maybe put a reminder and drink uh, but have enough water don't fall short on water okay the next question is what should i do during uh, ha- no sorry so we have already taken this what are easy techniques to calm down uh, sorry can you please come in what are what techniques what are easy techniques to calm down okay so most of what we discussed right i see as i said i was only try to pick up very easy things uh, doable practical uh, which can be done in one or two months um, best is i think the breathe the deep breathing uh, your gyan mudra should help you a lot with the pineal gland if you can put a haldi kumkum put it if you can put a chandan try try doing that all that helps it helps with your pineal gland uh listening to music if if you think music helps you calm down it could be any music whatever you like it could be pop it could be carnatic music depending on what you like what is your area of interest uh you could also maybe um diffuse a bit essential oil you could use a diffuser and put Uh, essential oil that also helps it works uh, absolutely fine uh, or maybe burn a camphor or keep some camphor uh, you know besides wherever you're sitting studying etc that also helps quite a bit um if think uh, maybe taking a break cooking may uh, calm down many people so if you think do go to the kitchen do cooking for 20 minutes you know if that may also de stress you or maybe just doing a jharu uh, pocha may help you just help your parents with you know their daily chores that also is very relaxing for many people so whatever you think just going sitting out in the sun may help you may calm you uh, other than what i've already uh, discussed right i'm so not repeating other than uh, repeating what i've already discussed other than the uh, that even these things are very easy you know sometimes you just need a break or maybe just talk to your friend or your family whatever uh, you know de stresses you these are very uh, easy things to do uh, you know sometimes it's just like you know we're just studying and studying and studying and we we are getting so overwhelmed we we are not it's just that one break that we need that 15 20 minutes break and you know you gather yourself back and you come back and uh, re- restart okay so richa we will, this is the last question which we are going to take today is that uh, how should i know whether the student with whether the child is under pressure or stressed Okay, so that's a very good question. I think as a parent, we all want to know, right, whether our child is uh, uh, is uh, under stress or not. But what we are doing in the process is that we are adding to his or her stress. The more a parent is stressed, thinking whether the child is stressed or not, we are only adding to the child's stress levels, right? So we are not uh, instead of helping, we may actually be doing more harm. So I think the best thing that the parent can do. is create that positive environment in the house see as parents we are more mature than our uh, than our kids right more often than not so we need to handle it a little better we need to make sure that the environment e is equal to mc square the environment the energies are all positive right so even if this child is struggling a little bit uh, uh, in in handling that situation the child will get a lot of support 
just by our thoughts we don't even need to do any action our thoughts itself will start reflecting on the way they are uh, handling the situation so most 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 important for a for a parent is stop uh, stop being stressed yourself if you are stressed stressed it will reflect on the child so as a parent we need to learn to face stress more than the child needs to learn otherwise the child gets in a vicious circle and he or she will be will find it very very difficult to get out of it our role as a parent is to provide that uh, environment uh, to provide that support system uh thank you thank you rita for really well answered questions and we got many questions related to handling the stress of their child especially from parents and i believe the answer that you just shared with all of us and that how we can make uh, a child stress in control by controlling our own stress is very uh, very well said and it would be helpful for many people uh thank you everyone for your active participation into the into this session i'm very uh, happy to see that how everyone is very much um concerned about the health and well being of uh, each others uh, and with this we are closing the session uh, say, stay stay safe be healthy thank you thank you richa thank you thank you so much all the best to everyone for the exams